Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about the foot pedal for my Eastwood TIG 200 ACDC TIG welder. If you've watched the video of the first welds that I did with this welder, I had issues with this foot pedal right out of the box where basically it would strike an arc but it would never give me full power and wouldn't recognize that like I pushed the pedal all the way down while I was welding. Uh, so it didn't really work and today I'm going to be diving into it a little bit and diagnosing what the issue is. That way I can get this repaired and start using it again instead of a finger switch. So I'll take you guys along and hopefully this will help somebody in the future with issues that they might be having with this foot pedal. So let's jump into it. Before I get into disassembly today, here's the tools that I'll be using to do the diagnosis. So if you're trying to do this at home, you will need a multimeter that has a continuity and resistance function, a Phillips head screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, uh, some small needle nose pliers, and an adjustable wrench. The pliers and the adjustable wrench aren't truly necessary unless you have some stuck nuts, and depending on how deep you need to dive into this, the, the pliers might need to be used to pry up some tabs. But, uh, Let's uh, jump into disassembling this now. So the first thing you'll have to do is take off the six screws on the base that will take this cover plate off of it and expose the electronics underneath. So when you get into this, you'll notice there's a switch over there. There's a potentiometer there and then another potentiometer right here. So this first switch that the red and yellow wires lead to is the uh, arc start switch. So basically, as soon as you put some pressure on the pedal, that switch breaks and knows that you are trying to start an arc, and that's what starts your high-frequency start. This potentiometer controls your amperage settings. If I can rotate here. That's the dial on the side. And then this is a potentiometer that picks up the distance that you've pushed the pedal. So that metal tang there is in a slot and as you push it slides. So what I started out with to diagnose is I wanted to make sure that there was no breaks in the wiring in this entire length. So I test it from each pin basically that the, these thick cables went to. So you have red or maroon, whatever color you want to call that, yellow, blue, green, and then black. I made sure that there was continuity from this end of the plug all the way to the connections that were made to follow. Um, there's a pinout that I'm going to put up in the top corner so that if you're looking at this, in this orientation, uh, I will post what each pin is supposed to be. That way you don't have to do the troubleshooting that I did. Um, but I had continuity in all the wires, so I knew that I was good from the plug into the foot pedal. Then what I started doing is tracing from the amperage controls that are within this. So I started with this potentiometer and then moved to this one second. So I'm going to pop this out to show you what I did. In order to take the amperage adjustment knob off the side of the foot pedal, you just need to use a small flathead screwdriver to loosen up the set screw, and then you can pull the adjustment knob right off, right off the top. Then after that, you gain access to one of the nuts that holds that potentiometer on. You just need to use an adjustable wrench uh, to loosen that nut up and then you can slide the potentiometer out of the back. So the way a potentiometer works is it's strictly just a variable resistor. So basically this pin with the blue wire running to it is power, black is ground, and the yellow is the resistor output. And note, this is a thin yellow wire not the yellow wire that runs to the other switch down here in the corner. But in order to test these, what you want to do is put your multimeter on resistance mode and you will take from one of these pins, it really doesn't matter which one, 
and then go to the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the blue to the center and I'm going to twist the dial here and make sure that the readout on my multimeter is changing. So let's do that. So you can see by the resistance value changing on the multimeter screen there that this potentiometer is testing as good. So I know my issue isn't here. So now that that is good and showing no issues, I'm going to move on to the next potentiometer, which is the one that slides when you press the foot pedal down and test that. So to remove this, there's just that plate and those two screws that hold this in and they put access holes on the end so you can actually get to it. So all it takes is me loosening those couple of screws. You don't even have to take them out completely. You just have to loosen them up and it gives you enough room to slide this potentiometer out the back. Like so. So slide potentiometers, which is what this is, operate the same as the rotating ones that we already tested, but the wiring aspect for them is a little bit different. So you'll see that you have two leads here that are in line, and then one extra lead over on this side. So the two leads that are in line function the same as the outer leads on the rotating potentiometer. So this is your power coming in, this is still ground. This is the wiper, so this is what picks up the, the position of the potentiometer as it's traveling. So you want to compare the resistance between the yellow wire or the black wire and compare it to what's coming out of the green wire. So you'll notice once I get the multimeter leads connected to the actual pins on the potentiometer that my multimeter just keeps displaying overload so it's actually not reading anything so now we're going to crack this potentiometer open and see what our issue might be in order to take this potentiometer apart all it takes is bending up these six tabs that are on the actual casing and these tabs just squeeze around the edges of this uh, PCB. So what you get when you take this apart is you have the wiper mechanism. Uh, so this is the mechanical portion that is actually moving. It has some tabs to pick up the runways that they run on. Um, but basically, once you get this apart, you can just set this to the side. There's no real reason to mess with this unless you can test continuity across both sides of this to make sure that it's touching both sides and this isn't the part that's broken. But in my case, this is not where my issue was. When you crack this open, you'll see that you have one side that has a carbon film on it and the other side that's just blank. This may not always be the case, but it is the case for this particular potentiometer. So this is the power lead in side. This is the output side, which is the wiper uh, or the green lead that I referred to earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check continuity across both of the uh, runways here. So I'm gonna start on this side and then go to this side. So you'll see that I have continuity across both sides or the entire length of the runway on the first side that I test the side with the carbon film but when I go to the second side I do not have that same continuity anymore so we know where my problem lies now is on the output portion of this potentiometer but now we just need to figure out the why so a quick visual inspection of this will show that this is burnt or corroded uh, or broken in some way right here where the runway is supposed to meet the output lead. So that is where the green wire is soldered to is on this tang that comes out the backside. Um, you can see the brown, brownish black marks underneath there and uh, that caused this potentiometer to fail. 
Um, some potentiometers, you can get away with taking this connection off and soldering it to the opposite end, and it will still function the same. I didn't want to try that because I don't really mess around with welders. Uh, I don't want to have this wired backwards because that, that is the potential if you do that and flip these. The potential is that it'll basically function the opposite of how it does from the factory. So it would put out your highest output amps the sooner you push on the pedal. So the less travel you have would be a more powerful weld, which is what no one wants. Um, without testing that, there's no way to know if that's truly what would happen. The other way to combat that is if you would take these two leads as well and flip them because then basically you've made a mirror image. Um, but that's the, the diagnosis on this particular piece. So that's how you diagnose the issues with your Eastwood foot pedal. I contacted Eastwood's customer service department in order to see if I could buy just the potentiometer as a spare part, and turns out you can. Uh, I don't have a part number for it. I just emailed asking for the slide potentiometer for their welder foot pedal, and they knew exactly what I was talking about. So uh, it's awesome to be able to save all the money from having to buy a new foot pedal. Uh, new foot pedals from Eastwood are $160. This potentiometer that they're sending me costs me $5.29 to get it shipped to my door. So big cost savings there. And all it's going to take is me desoldering those three connections, soldering them onto the new one, and then reinstalling all the screws that I showed you guys that I took out. So it's really not that labor intensive. Um, take me probably half an hour. So it's uh, awesome that they provide that as a spare part, and hopefully this video helped anybody else that's having issues with uh, their foot pedal on an Eastwood welder. Um, even if it might not be this particular potentiometer, hopefully this at least shows you uh, what you should be checking uh, as far as electrical continuity and then resistances. But that's going to wrap up this video, and we'll see everybody next time. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and have a good night.